the entrance. The entrance. Beginning with the day after the Sabbath, the day on which you bring the wave off your sheep, you shall count seven full weeks. And then on the day after the seventh week, the fiftieth day, you shall present the new cereal offering to the Lord. The tenth of this seventh month is the day of atonement, when you shall hold the sacred assembly and mortify yourselves and offer an oblation to the Lord. The fiftieth day of this seventh month is the Lord's Feast of Booths, which shall continue for seven days. On the first day, there shall be a sacred assembly, and you shall do no such work. For seven days, you shall offer an oblation to the Lord, and on the eighth day, you shall again hold your sacred assembly, and offer an oblation to the Lord. On that solemn closing, you shall do no sort of work. These, therefore, are the festivals of the Lord, on which you shall proclaim a sacred assembly, and offer it as an oblation to the Lord, 
burnt offerings and cereal offerings, sacrifices, and libations as prescribed for each day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial song. Sing with joy to God our help. Sing with joy to God our help. Take of the melody and sound the tingle, the pleasant talk and the lyre. Blow the trumpet, trumpet at the new moon and the full, at the full moon on your solemn feasts. Sing with joy to God our help. For it is a statute in Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob, who made it a decree for Joseph when he came forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. There shall be no strange God among you, nor shall you worship any alien God. I, the Lord, and your God, who led you forth from the land of Egypt. Sing with joy to God our help. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were astonished and said, Where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. So on top of everything else today, I want to mention this is First Friday, so we uh, especially remember the sacred and merciful heart of Jesus every First Friday. Uh, yesterday, in the uh, reading from the book of uh, the Old Testament first reading, we heard about the sacred space that God provided for the Israelites. Uh, he asked Moses to erect a tent, a tent and a dwelling place for the Ark of the Covenant where the uh, Ten Commandments, the tablets of the Ten Commandments would be inscribed. So this would be a sacred space, and God would then move the Ark of the Covenant and accompany the Israelites as they journeyed uh, through the desert to the Promised Land. So yesterday we heard about the importance of having a sacred space in our, in our life. And we're very blessed at the rectory to have a chapel, but we just took one of the guest bedrooms, uh, one of the two guest bedrooms, and made one of them into a chapel. And so that's the place where Father Andrew and I are able to pray. Uh, a lot of people can't take a room in their house and make it a chapel because it's needed for bedroom space and so forth. But almost everybody can create some kind of a space in their house, even if it's a little corner by a chair, where you keep a crucifix and a rosary and a Bible. And it's a place you preserve so that, you know, when you need to talk to God, you go in seek out that sacred space it kind of changes your whole attitude and helps you to be open and to welcome god so today we hear about in the first reading this time from not exodus but leviticus we hear about the importance of sacred time and in this reading there's a conversation going on between god and moses and god is reminding moses of all the moments in which god has broken into the history of the israelites and he tells Moses that you, you and the people of Israel, you need to remember these moments because they're sacred moments, they're special. And you need to interrupt the, the daily flow of ordinary life in order to remember them. And so he talks about the, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which the Jewish people remember in the month of Nisan. Passover usually is in March or April, like Easter for us 
is usually in March and April. And that's the remember of God provi providing freedom and escape from slavery, which is a very important part of the history of the Israelites. And then we go on to hear about uh, the importance of remembering the first fruits of the harvest. So the people are to bring the first time they planted and they see the first little green leaf come out of the ground. They need to bring that to the priest and the priest waves it up in the air. And this is a special Jewish feast. Uh, and then also then at the end of a certain number of days, at the end of seven weeks, when the crop is more fully grown, the people again bring the crop and they bring it to, to the priest and they offer it up because the ability to have food and to have uh, pro production from the land is also a gift from God. And this was another feast to be celebrated. And then we hear about the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, which ordinarily is in September of the year for Jewish people. And how important it is to, to remember our sins and to mortify ourselves and to beg God for forgiveness for our sins. So this is remembered. And then we also have the Feast of Booths, which remembers exactly what we talked about yesterday, how the Israelites moved by steps and stages in tents throughout the desert, finally before they reached the Promised Land and God provided for them. And that's another feast. And there are others. There are several other feasts. But God is telling the people, you need to make a sacred space and a sacred time for me. This is important. This is to elevate you above your animal, earthly instincts to the sacred in your life. Now, can anybody guess what is our most important sacred time and space in, as Christians? Can anybody want to yell it out? The Mass, yes. Sunday Mass. Sunday is the day the Lord Jesus rose from the dead. So every time we gather on Sunday, we're gathering to remember the great gift of Christ's death first, and then his resurrection, which broke the bonds of death and gave us the opportunity for eternal life with God. So we're remembering that. And not just special days, but every day, we need to have a sacred time and a sacred space for God. And what are there, 50 or 60 people here in church today? You're here because you recognize it's important. You recognize it makes a difference in your life when you stop and ask God to sanctify your day and try to consciously, deliberately raise your mind and heart to God. The rest of your day goes well, doesn't it? It goes better. I know because I used to sit in those pews before I got up here. And I remember what a difference it made in my law practice when I would go to Mass and when I would be faithful to prayer. And what a difference that would make because God was blessing and anointing me. And of course, we have all these special holy days of obligation that aren't necessarily on a Sunday when we say this is a time to remember a significant event in our history, our church history, our salvation history, our story, and we remember that. So this is what this reading is about. Some people go, what is this reading in here for? Well, that's what it's about. The Jewish people had this, and as followers in the Judeo-Christian, so do we. And we call it Sunday Mass. And that's the, the, the high point of being with the Lord. And today, as we remember uh, St. John Vianney, the patron saint of priests, he started out as the most unpromising of candidates for the priesthood. He was very slow in school, in a time when all priestly studies were in Latin, could not get Latin. He just couldn't. And so he struggled and struggled. He flunked out of seminary twice. But eventually, uh, his bishop said, well, he's not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. It is true. But boy, he is a holy, prayerful man. And he loves Jesus. And he loves the church. And so his bishop ordained him. And he stuck him out in the boonies. In ours a village of a couple of hundred people, where when he arrived, 14 or 16 people were going to Mass on Sunday. It was pathetic. So what did he do? Well, he had no great eloquence. What he did was, 
he went in front of the Blessed Sacrament every day and started praying for his people for hours a day. And he started fasting, eating only raw, uncooked potatoes. Yikes. And people started hearing about him. They thought he was crazy. But they came to hear about him, and then they would talk to him, and they would be utterly stunned by his sanctity. And they would decide to go to confession, and he would tell them, after they confessed their sins, some of the other sins that they needed to be sorry for that they had to confess. And they soon recognized that he was given extraordinary spiritual gifts by God. And word spread. And it wasn't very long before the people of that town gave up their drinking and all the other stuff they did to not come to church. And they came back to church. And so did the little villages around them. And pretty soon the kings and princes of Europe heard about this guy and they started making trips to ours. And in time it became a pilgrimage center of about 100,000 people a year. And St. John Vianney spent up to 16 hours a day in the confession, all because he made a sacred time and space for God. And that was his unique journey. And oh, the devil was unhappy with John Vianney, very unhappy, and put him through torture. But he prevailed. And uh, I remember one of the highlights of my priesthood was going with another priest. We went to the little town of ours, uh, out in the middle of nowhere, still out in the middle of nowhere, but still only two blocks long. And we were able to celebrate Mass there in that church. And the altar is built right above the glass enclosed tomb where St. John Vianney is buried. It was such a, such a powerful moment. And I remember I was in the vocation office at the time, and we didn't have very many men stepping forward for priesthood, and I prayed for that when I was there. When I came back home from the trip, there were four men who contacted our office to uh, explore priesthood, and several of them are priests today. And I remember the Irish priest I worked with, Father Harry, and all of this unfolded. He said, go back to France. You're going a lot more there than you are here. And the other priest also had some wonderful things happen through his visit to ours as well. So St. John Vianney is a, a powerful intercessor, not just for priests, but for needs. And uh, let's pray for the grace of God to make sure we have a sacred time and space in our week and in our home. We bring our prayers to God, our Heavenly Father. For the clergy, may God bless them in their service to the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may they be filled with wisdom to govern for the good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alienated from their faith, may God bring upon them His faithful and healing presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of our Lady of Prophets of War, may we be spared the loss and damage to life and property during the hurricane season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now come to add our own intention in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As your prayers for our parish staff and our school staff and faculty, we have a day of retreat today, which will be an all-day retreat.
pray that we uh, that everyone will be open to receiving the Holy Spirit and that we will experience a great anointing in our school as we prepare to begin a new academic year next week. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace in Ukraine, for an end to war, violence, and racism in our world, for a culture which respects life and the values of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, please hear the prayers we offer, which we make in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed at your altar in commemoration of Blessed John Vianney, so that as you brought him glory, we may through these sacred mysteries grant us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the festival of St. John Vianney, you bid your church rejoice. Strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words and preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Close on in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Close on in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took the bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, 
St. John Vianney, and all the saints that have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by my teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. <laughs> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion has on. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. And then I say to you, he is the head servant in charge of all his company.
Let us pray. They partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase the strength from our God in all who celebrate the feast day of blessed God the end, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation and trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together one Hail Mary, as uh, Mary, both Mary and St. Philomena, were the two favorites of St. John Vianney. And let's ask God to bless us with priestly and religious vocations in our area. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Just a reminder that during the 10 a.m. Mass this Sunday, we have a blessing of the backpacks for those children returning to school. Don't have to be from St. Francis, any school, if you want to have that blessing, then please bring your back, your child, grandchild, backpack to the Mass, 10 o'clock Mass this Sunday. We also have children's chapel at the 10 a.m. Mass every Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God give him the only pray. And do God, the Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who follow up.